So the topic on which the uh, refutation takes place is um, replacing textbooks with tablets. <clears throat> the proposition that I will be refuting today is replacing uh, textbooks with tablets, especially for K through 12 grade schools, is counterproductive. And then the, my opponent's supporting claims are one, tablets cost more than printed textbooks, and two, tablets are distracting. And so my claim is that replacing uh, textbooks with tablets for K through 12 grade schools is actually productive. And so for for my opponent's first supporting claim, his um, first reasoning is that purchasing software or the textbooks online is also factored. And then he uses evidence, and the evidence is according to educational financer from the Time Magazine who compared a physical, physical textbook copy with an online version. She states, a new copy of David P. Clark's Molecular Biology retails on Amazon for $104.31 used copies starting at 40 and the Kindle edition is $39.99. And so in that evidence actually provided by my opponent is an equivocation because he is using this uh, piece of information which is the price of the Kindle edition and adding it on top of the price of the tablet. And so instead instead of actually like saying what the, what the text is actually saying which is that the Kindle edition is actually in fact the cheapest edition, the, the cheapest option, and then um, on top of that, I actually um, looked up the source, and according to Kayla Webley, Kendall, uh, Webley from the Time Magazine, Kendall was launching their rental service. So the whole um, article was about this. And then so meaning that the price of the Kindle, which is already $39.99, which is the lowest option, is actually going to get even cheaper. So it's going to be, um, the number was actually 80% off compared to the textbooks. So that's like very much more, uh, cost efficient than the than the textbook. And then uh, the second uh, the second reasoning under the first supporting claim was that maintaining multiple internet connections are costly. And so and then the evidence cited by my opponent was that as stated in the Federal Communications Com Commission under order number thirty four through thirty eight, the order adopts as bandwagon targets the State Education Technology Director Association's recommendation for internet access for schools of at least 100 megabytes per second per 1,000 students and staff in the short term and one gigabyte per second internet access per 1,000 users in the long term. And so my opponent was overlooking the facts being presented. And so the previously stated order is in fact a measure by the FCC to help close the, the Wi-Fi gap. And so the reason why this is important is because it actually um, contradicts my opponent's um, uh, claim, which is, um, so the article is actually stating that the E-rate program, which is what the whole article is based on, is that it's going to help design a way to um, help fund money for schools in order to have a better Wi-Fi capabilities that will suit a school in today's interactive and individualized digital learning world. So in fact, uh, this whole program is designed to help make sure that the schools, when they're implementing these sort of um, new programs that involve tablet users, they are actually more um, cost efficient. And so the, my opponent's second supporting claim is that tablets are distracting. And his, and his reason is, well, one of the reasons is, in a study done by the, by the Canada Research for Information and Communication Technologies and Education, Researchers surveyed 6,057 uh, students who were enrolled in grades 6 through 12 and 302 teachers about their experiences so far using tablets daily in the classroom. The same researchers reported that a third of Quebec students surveyed about using iPads in class admitted to playing games during school hours and an astounding 99% said the, uh, the gadgets were distracting. And so the evidence is actually a sweeping generalization because um, according to CNN, uh, iPads are a solid educational tool, uh, the study report. And so, students' interaction with the device was more personal. You could tell students were more engaged, said Coleman Kells, principal of, of Amelia Earhart Middle School. The study was conducted at a Riverside, California middle school from spring 2010 to spring 2011 using HMN Fuse Algebra 1 app. And then there was also a uh, Similar pilot courses and iPad programs um, being cropped up all over the country, primarily in private and boarding schools and selected universities. In the, pub in the public sector, more than 600 school districts have adopted a one-to-one -one iPad program. So basically, um, there's way more examples of where um, iPad is actually, uh, or not just iPad, where tablets in general are being more productive 
than are being uh, counterproductive. And so that's why, um, in conclusion, my claim is that replacing technical with tablets for K through 12 grade schools is productive. Thank you. Okay, uh, I thought you laid out the structure pretty well, although in the body of the speech it sounded like you had two number two points, which was a little bit confusing. On the first point, when you're talking about the cost issue, um, your explanation of how the advocate arrived at their conclusion concerning cost seemed to suggest that you thought the advocate was actually adding a whole variety of costs together instead of just looking at the singular cost of the Kindle. And I, I think I understand what you're saying. I do think that there are probably other ways to make this argument as well. For instance, the Kindle cost is a one-time purchase cost. and. Uh, you know the likelihood that you have to uh, purchase any other uh, tech is is really uh, limited. All you're going to be doing purchasing in the future is software, and that is the lowest part of the cost uh, component that's going on there. I think that's an easier way to make that argument than some of the things that you said. Um, you know, you did have one piece of information that talked about it, how in the long run it's going to be, I didn't quite understand how you got to this notion that it's 80% less than the textbooks. I think you are probably right on that, but it, it wasn't as clear as it needed to be. On the second point, um, which you called it the second point, I guess it's the second point under the first point. Uh, you, you're talking about how the, you know, the, the process of uh, creating standards for internet access is really designed to improve students' ability to use this. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure why either side is dealing with this argument as a cost issue. It's, it may be a general cost issue to a school district, for instance, but it's not necessarily a cost issue to the individual student. And there's not really much demonstration that it's a substantial cost that you're having to deal with. Your argument basically is this is infrastructure stuff that we need to have in order to be able to do these things, and so it's it's just something that we have to take care of. And I think that's a reasonable point, but it doesn't necessarily answer the fact that there is a cost component to it. The, the, the other argument concerns whether or not we can afford that cost component, and that's, I think, where you kind of are missing the chance to respond more directly to the advocate's claim. And then on the last point, I was a little, I, I think you've got, uh, one argument that you basically just repeat the advocate's information on uh, concerning the distraction, and then you kind of switch arguments and say, well, that's a uh, sweeping generalization. I'm going, well, you know what? If 99% uh, of the students said it, it is sweeping. You know, I'm not exactly sure why that that's a particular problem. They've given some documentation as to why this is problematic. Your answer to this is that if it's used appropriately, it actually produces better results. So that you've got a counterclaim on that. Um, I, I didn't hear any data that said it produced better results. I heard one quote that says student interaction is different with this kind of technology and we've got a study that shows that it's different and then we had another piece of evidence that says we've got a whole bunch of schools that are using this kind of one-to-one -one technology but I didn't get anything that talked about the results and none of that, even if it's true, denies that there are potential distractions there. So I think you're kind of, I thought that that was the weakest part of your argument. All right, thank you.